Welcome back. This is part two of a video series I'm doing on how to make money with your drone. So if you haven't watched uh, part one, uh, stop this video, go watch that one, and then come back because this one's not gonna make sense unless you watch part one. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some legal stuff. We're gonna talk about the FAA and some of the requirements you need to, to be able to fly in certain restricted areas. We're gonna talk about contracts, how to get paid, and all that good stuff. So let's get into it. So legal stuff. Uh, I probably should have mentioned this in the first video, but you need to make sure you register your drone with the FAA. And there's a website that you can go to, and I'll leave it uh, a link to it in the description below. But basically, you go on there and you fill out your information, your address, your name, what type of drone you have, and they're going to return back to you a certificate number. And that number is registered to you and your drone. And you must have that label on your drone at all times. So I'm going to introduce a scenario that's going to take us through the rest of the series. And that is uh, we've been hired by a local church to take photos and videos of their building, of their property. Now, when it comes to quotes, I never do them over the phone because then it becomes a he said, she said situation. And you never want to get into that kind of argument. You want to always have things in writing. And so typically what I would do is gather all the information from the initial discovery phone call, uh, get their contact information, find out if they have a deadline, find out the location of where they want you to shoot, ask them if there's anything around that area that you should be aware of, such as airplanes or stadiums or government buildings, ask them if they want uh, photos, videos, or both. These are all the types of questions that you want to ask uh, when you're on this discovery call. Gather all the information that you can to give them an accurate quote. Okay, so now we have the address of the church. And the next step is to make sure that we can actually fly there uh, before we send the quote. So you want to go to the App Store and download the Aloft Air Control app. So now that we have the app downloaded, I'm going to open up here on my phone. And right away, you'll see that the app is showing my location. So that little blue dot is me. And if I just kind of spread out here a bit and go out, you'll see uh, Charlotte is to my west and you'll see all sorts of uh, warning areas and blues and yellows and reds. And that's all important information to know. We'll talk about that. There's areas around me that I can't fly and this, this tool is going to help me understand that. So what I like about this app is it gives you the ability to search for your address uh, before you even get there and make sure you can fly there. So so under home, I can click search for location, and I've already searched for the address of this church, uh, Hopewell Baptist Church, and it's represented by the little black marker. And so if I zoom in there, you'll see there's the church campus right there. And as I zoom out, you'll see no problems with us flying there. There's no uh, circles, there's no blues, no yellows, nothing. So that means we can fly there, there's no problems. And that's great. And so. At this point, I would uh, contact the client and provide them with a quote. And we'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But let's say that, for example, the client wanted me to fly over here somewhere by the airport, the Charlotte International Airport. <clears throat> so as you can see, right by the airport, if I just, if I just click on the airport <clears throat> and scroll up, it'll tell me, hey, this is Class B airspace, which... Uh, once you take the Part 107 test, you'll learn all about uh, airspaces and classes and places you can fly and can't fly, but uh, Class B airspace, you can't fly. So you'll see the there's a zero. You'll see there's a zero, and it's red, and that's, that's not good. You can't fly there. But if I come over here to the west, and I click on the blue, again, it says... UAS facility map, permissible altitude for authorization, zero feet. So we can't fly there either. But if I keep going west, and you'll see this area over here has the number 400 on it. So now it says permissible altitude for authorization, 400 feet. Now we're still in Class B airspace, but it's possible that we can fly there uh, up to 400 feet. And... The way we would request authorization to fly in this space is through a protocol called LANCE. LANCE stands for 
low altitude authorization and notification capability. Basically, it's a protocol that allows you to request authorization to fly in restricted airspace. So I'm going to walk you through this Lance process and show you what you need to do in case your client wants you to fly in one of those restricted airspaces. So here we are. We've moved our map over to an area uh, not, not in the zero section, but where it says 400 feet to the west of the Charlotte Airport. So I'll click on Lance. And it's going to ask me what type of Lance request do you want to make? Uh, part 107 commercial or recreational? And I'll just choose commercial because in our scenario, we're teaching you how to make money with your drone. So this is a commercial flight. Okay, and now you'll see there, if I zoom in, it's got this little green box and you can drag that around. So I just use my finger to say, hey, I wanna fly at 400 feet or below. And then I'll hit next. So then it's gonna ask you, when do you wanna fly and how long? So we'll just choose something like tomorrow at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, and I wanna fly for uh, 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> And you'll see here it has some notes that authorizations can be made up to 90 days in advance. Next. So it says you're eligible for auto approval. And that's because we've chosen to fly under 400 feet. Okay, so that's good. That's a good sign. And you hit next. Now at this point, you'll see that it has my name, my phone number, it has my part 107 number, the date the 107 was issued, and all that was stuff I entered into the website earlier. And there's all sorts of terms and conditions that here you can read. But basically at this point, I would click agree and submit. And that's going to be sent out to the FAA, to the ATC, the air traffic control tower in the area. So two things will happen. You'll get a text message saying yes or no. And also here in the app, it'll tell you that you've been approved uh, to fly in that area. So that's, that's in a nutshell, that's Lance. That's how you get requests to fly in an area that is restricted. Okay, so now that we know we can fly at the church, the next step is to send the client a contract. And this contract is very important, and we're gonna talk about some of the elements that should be in your contract. Number one, it should include a scope of work. The scope of work will basically outline uh, what you will deliver, how, when, and where. If the client said, hey, I want photos, I would be specific in the number of photos that you plan to deliver. You could give them a range like 15 to 20 or be very specific like 15. When it comes to video, I would be very specific about how long the video is gonna be. And again, you could give them a range. It's one to two minutes. So you just wanna be clear with your expectations with the client and be upfront with them. Secondly, you wanna include a section about ownership and usage rights. You wanna state who clearly owns the photos and videos. Now as a shooter, you own the copyright to the photos and videos unless you transfer that to the client. But what I like to do is include a section in there that says, hey, I have the right to use this content for my demo reel. I'm gonna use this to advertise and promote my services to help me get more work. Next, you wanna make sure there's a section in there about liability and insurance. There are always risks involved with flying a drone and that can be risk to people or property or yourself. So you wanna include a clause in there that limits your liability in case something happens. And this would be the section where you want to include your drone insurance. And lastly, I would include a section about cancellation and termination. Sometimes things just don't work out. And there should be a section in your contract that says what to do in case you or the client want to back out. And as far as a good like payment structure, what I recommend, what I do is I say, hey, I require 50% upfront and then 50% when the project is done. That way I get paid for my time for all my effort going out there to shoot. And that way, you know, if they bail mid project, at least I have the deposit. However, just because you have all this information now about uh, the legal part of flying a drone, you have a client contract and you have your deposit, that doesn't mean you're gonna capture stunning photos and video that your client's going to love. Composition, lighting, and camera settings are all things you need to consider when you go out and shoot. So in the next video, we're actually gonna be going out of the church uh, with the drone and taking some photos and video and kind of let you shadow me to see what I do step by step. So click on the video for part three and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.